Okay, well, welcome. Good, beautiful Sunday morning. Um, it's a little bit cold out there. It's a little bit uh, chilly, but you know what? We are nice and warm here, and we are just so grateful to be able to come here before you to just be, um, well, to be able to say welcome and how blessed we are that you are joining us today. I, uh, we have a message. Well, we have a couple of messages here. You know, me and William, we take it back to back. And uh, so what we're doing is we're splitting in and hopefully, no, not hopefully. I know that something awesome is going to happen as you listen to these words. Amen. Because God always, always comes through. Um, I just want to say before I, I even uh, go on that, uh, you know, I am one blessed woman. I have um, I have the privilege of being married to a man that, honest to God, believes in some awesome, crazy things and how good God is and and how great things are, that are going to happen. And you know what? I man, when I'm down and and out, he's there, just lifting me up, and I pray that I'm able to do the same for him. And together, you know, we're believing for great and amazing things. So thank you for joining us this morning again. I would, uh, today the topic of my message is called Embracing the Power of the Wind. Embracing the Power of the Wind. We uh, live in Anaheim Hills, and uh, for those of you that uh, don't know, gosh, the hills, when it gets to uh, wind, whatever it is down there at the bottom of the hill, well, it's exponentially a lot stronger, tougher up here. And they, I kind of find it humorous when new people move into the vicinity and they, you know, type in uh, the neighborhood um, website, what's going on and what's, you know, has this happened here before and is it, are we going to be okay? Are we going to end up in Kansas? Because that's kind of what it feels like. But uh, no, nope, that's just the way it is up here in the hills. It gets doggone very windy and very strong winds. And yes, we are very firmly planted and we will not end up in Kansas. So don't worry about that. Embracing the power of the wind. I would like for you to please turn your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, and bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus saith the Lord God, come, from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as, as he commanded me, and breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, 
I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves for my people and brought you up from the from your graves. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Again, embracing the power of the wind. Now, I uh, had Desiree, my daughter, you know, give me some constructive criticism last week. And she said, Mom, uh, next time you talk about GLOF or whatever you were talking about, the glazer overflowing, uh, maybe you should be more sure about what you're talking about because it sort of comes out in your message that you're not too clear. Well, I know one thing. I'm very clear about what I know about the wind. Now, the wind, as we all know, it can destroy. The wind can dry up your bones and dry up your hands and your skin and feel like it's ready to crack. The wind can bury many things and it can break. It can, it can dry up your spirit. It can dry up your, 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 the, the energy that you have. And you could just feel just completely wiped out, completely out of breath. It can make you feel like you have slowly put yourself in a place of being buried where your dreams and your hopes and all those things that you were wanting for and wishing for and longing for through the years get more and more and more debris laid on top of them so that it feels like they're buried too deep to ever come back out. You know, the uh, yin and the yang to that is that wind also can bring, give you breath, can bring you life. It could also remove the dirt, the debris that has been laying on top of you for years and just been burdening you down and just keeping you down, discouraged without hope. We, uh, I have been working out at work every day with a, a friend at my work and it, oh my gosh, she is amazing. That woman has strength like no woman I have ever known. And uh, I gotta tell you, she is pushing me like I've never been pushed. I've always felt that I never needed to exercise and uh, well, I've been proven wrong. But, you know, we do all kinds of uh, uh, exercises on the steps, going down the eight floors and coming back up and going down. We go down sideways one way and then sideways the other way. And then we go down backwards and then we go up and then we go down the other way. And it's just unrelenting. By the time we're down, we are, well, at least I am. I am sweating. I am hot. I'm out of breath. I'm exhausted. So when we open up those doors to get out into the open and the colder that the wind is, the more refreshing it is to us, the more uh, exhilarating it brings life back to us. And, and it's, we look forward to it being cold and windy out there. We really do. So it can give you a little extra, you know, push, a little extra strength. Amen. But something else that the wind can do is that it can expose it can bring out of hiding those things that have been hidden that have been lost that have been dried up and brittle that have been just about out of life hebrew the word for wind can also mean spirit so the wind is a metaphor for spiritual truth. In Hebrew 1 7, God makes, it says, God makes his angels wind, wings, winds, or spirit. Usually, the four winds, which is, are 
mentioned here in uh, Ezekiel, uh, they're referenced to a, a remarkable or a, an unusual or a devastating event. If you want to check out Ezekiel 37, 9, Daniel 7, verse 2, or Zechariah 2, verse 6, those are good examples of remarkable, unusual, or devastating events caused by the, quote, four winds, unquote. Wind, as you know, is a natural atmospheric phenomenon that may be defined as air moving, sometimes with considerable force, from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Hence, you could feel the, the wind as it's pushing through. Moses said in his... Uh, Exodus 14, 21, stretch out his, he stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and make the sea dry land and the waste. The waters were divided. So this speaking out, the winds both caused a wall of water, and it also caused the land underneath it to become dry. So many more examples of this. And I'm going to just kind of leave you here, but one thing I do need to mention to you, the other day we were walking, William and I, our, our, our doggies in the morning, and um, as we're walking through up in the hills, we noticed these rocks. Now, I want you to know, I have walked up and down these hills continuously looking for rocks for my backyard because that's kind of how we've you know, been uh, uh, setting out our backyard. No rocks. I don't care how hard I look. I, I would even start to dig in places where it seemed like there might be a rock. Nothing. Completely just dirt, debris, grass, plants, a bunch of, uh, bunch of bark, a bunch of roots, trees, no rocks. Yesterday, rocks everywhere. And exactly the kind of rock that we actually have in our backyard. So we started collecting them. These rocks were not visible until the winds blew past there yesterday. The dreams are coming back. There are people here today that are listening that I want you to know the winds, the four winds are coming your way. Those things that have been hidden over the years with debris, with brokenness, Things that people have told you will not happen, get prepared. Get prepared because the winds are coming your way and they are not here to dry you up. They are no longer here to lay things, debris, brokenness, uh, de defeat, no more on top of your dreams. Get ready because the winds are coming your way. Amen. God bless you. Man, good morning. Um, just wanna just just give you a, a, a blessed time here this uh, morning. The message is called "Standing on His Word." And um, as I was coming from the park today, uh, I, um, I I took my youngin with me, so I took the car. I mean, actually, she's the oldest. I took I took uh, Lori's Lori's uh, SUV, um, her forerunner. Took the kids. Oh, well, I call them kids. Um, the oldest one and and Caleb with me, right? Uh, Foxy and Caleb. And so I took them there. And so I had to come back. But as I was coming back, I was driving back, and I looked at the hill, right there where I I turn to go to the house. I looked at the hill. And on the hill, there was a cross in about the middle, in the middle section. But right above the cross was a, a huge bush. And it was so big, the very first thing that came to my mind is, you must go through the cross in order to get to the burning bush, for it is the holy ground you walk on now. I just, I just love the way the Lord just ministers in my mind. It's amazing. So I just want you to turn to Ephesians 1, 4, 1, 4 for now. And then we're going to uh, move on ahead from there. And it says, long ago, 
Now, I want you to let these words just kind of penetrate into your heart because for what is to come soon for you, uh, your trials are just going to turn into victories. You, you got to get this scripture deep into your soul and into your spirit, into your mind, and correct your words by these words from you here this morning. It says, long ago, before, even before he made the world, that's what the Bible says. It says, God chose us to be his own. I want that to sink in. Because a lot of people say, oh, well, you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do this. Now, this is the only thing that you need to do. It's believe that long ago, even before he made the world, the Bible says God chose us to be his own through what Christ would do for us on the cross. He decided then to make us holy in his eyes without a single fault. We who stand before him covered with his love. Now I'm going to go into Ephesians 1, 7 and 8. And it says, so overflowing is his kindness towards us that he took away all our sins through the blood of his own sacrifice, calling us back as sons and daughters again through his sacrifice on that day, a human body he himself created for himself. And he has showered down upon us the richness of his grace. Now you know why I'm so full of faith. It's just words like this just turn me to our God. And I look at him and I just think, wow, man, he's such a beautiful and awesome God. It says in Romans 38, 37, in all these things, we prevail completely through the one who loves us. Trials, circumstances, anything that comes your way. Once you get a hold of this in your mindset, that Jesus Christ is your anointed sacrifice. Listen to this. The name Jesus means salvation. It means the best salvation that God could give you. The name Christ means the anointed sacrifice. The anointed sacrifice that God gave you. You don't have to do anything. Watch. I'm going to show you in Hebrews right here. It says, Hebrews 10, 5, it says, this is why when he, the one God as the Christ, the anointed sacrifice, came into the world, he said this to our Father, to our Spirit, whom we bow to. You did not want animal sacrifice or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer for them, for them being you and me. By going to the cross for us, the next scripture comes alive for us. Colossians 2.15, it says, He disarmed the rulers and authorities. He made a display of them in public, triumphing over them by it. Now, how did he do this? What he did on the cross opens up heaven and earth that anyone can come to him now. He made holy ground for you to, you to be on in his presence, not fear, not with blemish. It says not even a single fault is found in you. Standing on his word like this, we will do the next scripture. Take back territories that no Christian has claimed in this day and age lately but in fact is beginning going to beginning to start to do this. Now there is a time where there is a time that there is battle down here on the field. There are times that we need to stand on these scriptures that I'm showing you. And in this ways you do what Ephesians 6:11 says. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the attacks of the fallen angels. Now, personally, Lori knows 
I don't even take my, my, my armor off anymore. I mean, I used to think, you know, different when I was younger, but today I'm in an all out war against my enemies. I am ambitious for, for the Father, for the Son, for the Holy Spirit. I, n I now take up my position with a full armor on and I go and I, and, I, and I go out and I come in knowing fully well, Deuteronomy 28 says, I go in the favor of God. I, I come in the favor of God. And I no longer look at things the same way I used to look at things. And so... I can see in the spirit realm. You know, there, there is indeed something that was exposed just recently here in the land, uh, here in Anaheim Hills. Uh, in, in California, especially around Orange County, if, if, if you ever meet with the, with the, um, with the locals here, you're going to hear them say something like this. The Santa Ana winds. That's what they call them. What had happened was, um, long ago, a fallen angel, a very, very, very powerful fallen angel, came to Orange County. And he set himself up here. And he started pushing the wind. And Bible says, uh, Lori had just mentioned that God himself pushed the wind and it opened up the, 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 the river or whatever that is that they, that they crossed. They call, they, they call it the Jordan River or whatever they called it or the, or, or the Red Sea. Well, that's how strong wind can be if you do it in a controlled way. But you can also do it in an uncontrolled way and you can destroy things around you. I've seen what they call, I call it, a very powerful, a fallen angel from his right to even do anything, you know, blessings unto God. He used his powers here in, in California in a very naughty way because they can pull off roofs. Just so you know, why do I speak like this? And say, you say, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me show you. Um, Lori is right. The other day, he started acting up. And I've been fighting this guy for a long time since we've arrived here in the, in the land in Anaheim Hills in, in our property. And I don't like it when, 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 when I know good and well, God is not a God that is out of control. And I see it well in the Bible. The Lord pointed it out. When the winds, they can be used in a good way and in a bad way. He, he, God took the wind and he pushed through the Red Sea. And you can see he, he did it in a controlled way and he pulled it back. No harm came to the children of Israel and they walked through, right? And then it swallowed up their enemies, right? Well, I seen this fallen angel and I can tell. So it pushed through the land the winds came very, very bad and very hard. Well, all I did was I took up my stand, like it says, put on the full armor of God, believe that you are going to take back territory that belonged to them. They, all they did was they just, they are what we call squatters. They, they, they just come into the land and they just take whatever somebody else until somebody else kicks them out. But they are giants in the land. And you just got to put on the full armor and take your stand. You know, the scripture says in, um, in, in these scriptures that um, it says in, uh, in, in, in Ephesians uh, 6, 10, 18, it says, it, says, it says wrestle once. It appears only once, but yet it says stand four times. Stand in the evil days. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Stand, 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 and then stand. Stand, 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 stand. You stand on the promise that what you said because of what Jesus said you will do after the sacrifice was made on his, uh, on his behalf, uh, on our behalf through him, you will say, this is the right thing to say. Squatter, you need to go. And it took a day of battle 
of standing. But he now left. He left. I'm telling you this now because I fought the fight of good faith that God would do what I said he would do. And he moved that, that, that spirit out. Moved it out of this city. And you no longer see it in the city anymore. We got the territory back. This is a very important thing to understand because it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. The, these squatters, they do damage to uh, things that are around us. They, they don't allow us to go outside. They, they do a lot of bad things. Now, in a controlled way, the wind can do a great thing and come through and blow bad stuff out. It's true. But in this way, these squatters need to leave. You can't leave them in the land. They will destroy your furniture. They will destroy uh, everything that you, you've worked hard for and I have worked hard for. They will destroy. So I say pick up your, pick up your, your, your stand against them. There's one called hurricane. There's one called um, um, uh, uh, tornado. And there's one called fire that... that that gets out of control. If you ever see an out of control fire and God has placed you there, it's your time to take up the stance. Somebody's got to come with me and believe with me. If it, it, I can't do it all by myself. I would get weak and tired and exhausted. This actually wiped me out pretty well yesterday. About, hmm, I want to say about two o'clock in the afternoon, I was pretty much, I was spent. I, I, uh, I did a little bit more work Jumped in the shower and said, nah, I'm done, man. I'm just chilling. I went and picked up some food for Lori and I, and I was like, nah, I'm done. I'm, I'm through. I, I, know, I know that God is leading me to take a rest. So I just want you to get that. And remember, remember this. In the battle, you have so many promises that you are fighting from victory, from the victory. You are not fighting for victory. It's already yours. It's already ours. It is promised to us because it is coming from a God who cares for people. He cares in this gentle way. He cares and he presses back your enemies. Okay? Amen? Amen? And uh, let me see what kind of time I have left. Nothing. Uh, I have nothing left as far as time. So I'm going to give you the benediction. And I hope that sinks in. There's so much, so much. And, and the Lord is doing so many great things uh, with Lori and I. And I'm looking forward to so many things that God is going to do um, on behalf of the, the, the county here, the Orange, Orange County. He's going to do some great things. He's giving me some, some great ideas how to make uh, uh, some income for the church. And we have lawyers, by the way, that, that help us uh, come up with these ideas. And, it, and, it's, and it's an awesome thing, you know. So, so I just want to just um, encourage you in that way that the Lord is going to do some beautiful, man, just mind-blowing things. And you're going to go, wow, man, that's so cool that God did it that way. Amen. Amen. He can do things above and beyond what we ask or guess or, or, or request in our wildest dreams. Amen. So I say the benediction is the Lord blesses you. And the Lord keeps you with the blessings through Christ, the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. Surely with blessings, he blesses you. When God blesses you, it enlarges. The blessings enlarges your territory in him here on the earth, enlarges. What is evil disappears. It must flee. It must flee when you stand. And when God blesses, even your mistakes prosper because the blessings of God is on you. God's favor is on you. With Christ, he has redeemed you, ransomed you from all the curses of the law. There is no, none, none left but blessings for you and I forever with him here and in the now, the Lord, the Christ makes it this way for you, for final. He is favorable to you and your loved ones. You're going with God. Enjoy his presence with us always. Amen and amen.
Or like I say every week, the Lord and I leave you. We know that the Lord doesn't leave you. So enjoy your week. Amen.